Yeah. He was hoping he was going to do it in Swedish, but... Yeah, yeah. 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 my English is... Uh, well, I, I'm trying to do it in English. Okay, um, so I'm going to talk about uh, the future of democracy. And uh, I'm going to talk about why we need to uh, upgrade democracy in a new way. And when, then I will take you through some examples of where that's done from around the world. And after that, we're going to talk about some of the problems that we have to solve about uh, participation, quality, and um, security, and hacking and such stuff. So, my name is uh, Jonas Lindgren. And uh, in me, I have Catherine Wallach, uh, who's going to um, help me if I pass out from nervousness or something. Uh, and uh, I, a couple of a couple of years, I've been uh, active in non-political party that's called Active Democracy. That's a direct democracy party. And uh, okay, so uh, just to uh, for audience say, I started with uh, Week 20 in 1981, and uh, Kingo Sixtila and uh, uses mostly Linux, and uh, I'm very interested in the semantic web uh, and how we can uh, do a better uh, future. Should I say a few words about myself? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So my name is Peter Ivan, and uh, I don't have a background in computers. I've worked with computers obviously for a long time. I'm a trained graphic graphic designer. That's what I do. Uh, however, I am interested in politics, not in traditional politics, but alternative politics. And I wanted to get engaged in politics, involved somehow, about maybe two years ago. And as most people, I think, I, I voted to one side most of my life. So I kind of went to those people and said, what can I do with you? How can I help you? And I asked questions. And they answered some of the questions, but the interesting part were, was the, the questions they didn't answer or didn't want to answer. And then I met you Nuss at uh, Jan Toya here in Gothenburg about a, a year and a half ago. And, and I've heard of this, this party. And I, I've seen it, seen it online, just looked it through really quickly. And, and I sat down with him and, and asked him, so what's your party program? Tell me about it. And he said, we don't have any. And I said, well, what kind of well, the party doesn't have a program? Uh, or manifesto, and he said, well, we believe that people should vote and think for themselves and make, their, make up their own minds and make their own decisions uh, without ideological influence. And uh, that really appealed to me. So five minutes later, I decided I, I would become a member of this, this party. And I, I've helped redesign the, the website. And, Jonas and I have been out in the streets here in Gothenburg talking about the party, about uh, what kind of an opportunity this kind of flavor of direct democracy could be if people uh, want to create real change uh, with an open mind. So that's sort of my background. Go ahead. Okay, and uh, we invite you to ask questions and we can have a discussion. Uh, so I'm going to talk about in about 20 minutes, and the rest is for discussion. And you can. So I'm, I'm mostly going to be a side to answer questions. That he's, he's a technical guy and a soft value guy. So <laughs> he's okay. much smarter than I am. <laughs> okay. So number reason uh, why are we doing this? Uh, I'm visionary and interested in the future of the internet and uh, but there are lots of other people who uh, have a feeling that the government doesn't represent them and that the way we do politics is uh, outdated uh, 
so this is from Egypt in uh, 2011, and uh, it, that moment spread to Spain, where there was an uprising and call for a real democracy now. Uh, so that's one of the common themes in most of the demonstrations. And also about the economy, we are on the economy track not here. And uh, the changes that might need to be done to the economy maybe can't be done within the existing political systems because it's sort of a paradigm shift. And uh, how can you introduce new ideas that goes against uh, the current paradigm? Uh, so there's lots of uh, interest in the income divide, 99% and the top 1%. And lots of ideas of how we can change the economy, but how is that change going to come? Uh, and uh, I think that we can do it by upgrading the democracy so that the demand can come from the people uh, and that we can introduce new ideas. And this is from Tuesday in Gothenburg, uh, part of the million mask march of Anonymous. Uh, so, uh, and it's also part of this that uh, the government doesn't work the way it's now. We, it's, it's specifically the party politics. Because um, uh, I was at the conference uh, a democracy conference in Falun in Sweden, and uh, there was um, see Martin Karlsson from the uh, University of Örebro, uh, who uh, studies the changing trends in democracy. And uh, they're moving away from the old party systems. Uh, especially in Sweden, uh, it has declined steadily for the last 50 years. And actually, the membership of inner parties has declined with 84% uh, in the, since the highest point. Uh, so the type of participation today is it's not that we are less political, but the, it's moment to permanent participation to temporary, from collective to individual, and from ideology to issues. Uh, yeah, so you want to think? Well, some of the, some of the um, things that we, should, we think should be a part of the true democracy is, is some of the things that are lacking. Uh, so if we have a mind part, technical part, or logical part, and a heart part, the mind part includes transparency. Um, most of you probably watched Uptal Gransken this week and how there's a huge lack of transparency in politics uh, where things are supposed to be open but they're not. I, I... No, it's fine. It's for the video. Oh, okay. Where we do things together and 
by using the ideas of many, instead of the way we have it today, using the ideas of few, we think that the quality of decisions and the results of those decisions will be higher. And also, the hard part, the inclusion, and when, when we talk to people, my experience is that when we talk to people in the streets, uh, we talk to a lot of people who say, I'm not interested in politics. So I ask them, well, do you think that uh, a good quality school is important? They go, yes. Do you think that good health care is important? Yes. Do you think that maybe when you get older, you want to stay at a place where you're taken care of in a dignified way? Yes. Well, those are all political questions. What do you think the main reason is? Because obviously you have opinions, but you're saying that you don't care about politics. Why do you think that is? Is it maybe because your voice is not heard? And they say, well, it's possible. So is it possible if your voice was heard that you would participate more? Well, it's possible. So that's the inclusion part. Uh, equality. Today, the discussion, debate format, at least in Sweden, and I think in many places, is sort of, politicians don't speak of, of the issues per se in their own politics per se, but more pointing fingers at others saying that you've done a good job, a bad job, or we're going to do a better job. And they don't really explain how they're going to do a better job. It's just words. Uh, and we think that a climate, debate climate where everyone is heard and focus on the focuses on issues will be a more inclusive uh, democracy. And so that's the to be heard part as well. So okay. So this is the system that's been developed or method that's been developed, which is sort of a mix between representative democracy and direct democracy. Uh, a lot of issues with representative democracy, uh, which I'm going to touch on right now, touch on them a little bit. Uh, but direct democracy, people say that, well, I don't have time to vote on everything. I don't have time to get involved in, in every issue, which is true, because people have to work, make a living, build a family, and, and all the things that people do. Uh, so we've introduced a, a, a part of representative democracy, which we call uh, delegation. So basically, if you take away these two delegates, the people have the right to vote in every issue they choose to take part in. So if you're interested in, in, in the environment or whatever issue you can think of, you can, you can uh, start, uh, uh, start that uh, topic uh, stock opinion. I don't know what the word for that is uh, in English. Uh, sorry. <laughs> uh, so that's the direct democracy part. And then for all the other issues that you don't have the knowledge or time or don't want to get involved in, you can delegate your vote to a politician or party, uh, or you can delegate it to maybe in environmental uh, questions, maybe the Greenpeace organization or Nathiopitzvaniam. Or, if you have a neighbor that you trust who is, happens to be a professor in nuclear physics, in, 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 a, in a question that regards that, you could delegate your vote to him or her. And so that's for the delegate, dele, delegated part. So on this, this uh, if we look at the entire system here, there's two people, the great people, who've chosen not to vote in this particular topic, who've delegated to this person and this person, or organization. And they inform the people why they're going to vote in a certain way, uh, put up consequence analysis, uh, pro and con, economic, um, consequences of certain decisions, etc., and make the decision for those people who don't want to get involved in this question. And the rest, just vote yes or no, or 200 or 500 or whatever it would be. And then there's a result, in this case 56% yes and 44% no. So the 10 delegates, uh, or politicians, or representatives, 
in the parliament or commune for Mektia or wherever it might be, uh, vote in a way that represents whatever the decision of the people was. So in this case, it would be six people voting yes and four people voting no. And also the the blank blank yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, those who choose not to vote or blank, say blank, uh, blank, votes. Blank, blank blank votes are also represented. So if if, if ten percent would vote that I don't want to take a uh, I don't have a position in this, uh, that is also represented in the vote in the parliament. So that's the Sorry about this. So for now, some examples now. Um, that liquid democracy that you saw um, is uh, one system uh, that exists. So this is, uh, I'm um, sorry for using proprietary software here. Uh, some examples from around the world. In Estonia, you have e-democracy since 2005. They actually got an um, electronic ID and they can vote on general elections online. Yeah? Uh, only general elections or in spe specific issues? Uh, if it's less for general elections. Uh, so it's some percentage that do at the most use the old way to vote. And you also have citizen initiatives. Uh, that means that if you gather 10,000 uh, supporters, that uh, initiative will be taken up in the parliament and uh, translated to a law for a vote in the parliament. And you get the same thing on a European level in the European Citizen Initiative. That's from uh, that's pretty recent. And uh, that means that you can receive support from one million signatures in Europe. Your initiative will be taken up with by the European Commission that will propose a law that will be voted on by the European Parliament. And one example for um, this is the Right to Water initiative that gathered almost two million signatures. And it's about the right to clean water and sanitation. So uh, another example is participatory budgeting, and that means that on the municipality level, you can uh, direct the funds for infrastructure and uh, the common projects for healthcare and uh, childcare and so on. Uh, so everybody can vote on actual projects and then can participate in the projects. Uh, and that has been widely popular and spread throughout Brazil and uh, throughout the world in different areas. Uh, so you, another example of that is La Plata in Argentina and the uh, Recife in Brazil. And then you got uh, uh, websites for um, participation uh, there the citizen can uh, discuss together and vote on issues and that will then inform the politicians about uh, what the citizen actually think about proposed laws. Uh, one such, such system is that the Reykjavik that was used uh, during the time when there was a um, lot of protests in Iceland and then it was later taken up by the city of Reykjavik for as an official platform and it has been developed to, uh, in a website that's called Your Priorities uh, that has uh, sections for every country in the world so this system can be used in, in your own country or, and also in European and global level. Uh, then we got in uh, Sweden Valentina is actually the world's first direct democracy party that got voted into the local parliament, the municipality. Uh, so what that is, it's um, 
and direct democracy party like doesn't have a political stance on its own. The only thing it does is that it uh, let the citizen vote on every question, on every vote, and they gather those votes and they use their uh, people in the municipality to uh, uh, vote as the citizens voted. Uh, so this has they has existed. This is, they are on the third term right now, so they have existed in about ten years in the local level and inspired a lot of people around the world. So uh, we also have, for example, the online part of Canada is also direct democracy party, uh, and they have the citizen network party X, which is rather new party in Spain. You got the Senate online in Australia. Australia and the network party in Argentina and uh, yeah, the Five Star Movement in Italy that's uh, actually the largest direct democracy party right now uh, they, they are sort of an anti-establishment party they didn't set out to be a direct democracy party but everything they do uh, is uh, used by direct democracy by the people who has registered in the Five Star Movement, and they tested out a lot of different uh, tools for this. For example, um, the liquid feedback system that's um, also used in the Pirate Party in Germany. Uh, so some, some parties use the direct democracy systems for the internal democracy in the party. Uh, but when you got the pure direct democracy parties that let everybody choose the systems, and they are, are steered by the majority. And in Sweden, they have uh, active democracy. That's um, what where we're from, and we're doing trying to do this also for Sweden, a, a direct democracy party. And you also got our systems, for example, vote it, but also the way in Sweden, and that is uh, to bring direct democracy into the organizations and societies. So you can, for example, hold annual meetings in, uh, on the web uh, instead of, uh, if you've got a large organization, you don't have to travel to the annual meeting to participate. Okay, so that some, are some examples, and uh, you, can, you can look at some details of that if you have questions for it. Uh, so, so that's Estonia uh, European Citizen Initiative, participatory budgeting, your priorities in Demo X, Five Star Smolten Movement, and both it. And now for the uh, security part. Um, there are two big issues that comes up if you're going to do democracy online. And uh, one part is the anonymity, the secrecy, uh, if you want to have secret voting. And the other part is reliability, so you can trust the result of, of the elections. Uh, and the reason for, for having secrecy is of course, so that you can't uh, buy votes, uh, and also to eliminate threats. Uh, you can't threaten somebody to vote in a in certain way if you don't can verify how they, that they actually voted in that way. And also peer pressure, that psychological pressure, even if it's not direct threats, threats can, you can also be influenced by your surrounding uh, and we also want uh, reliability, so avoid frauds. Uh, and if you got users' computer, you want to uh, avoid problems with hacking. And uh, the most common way to solve this e-democracy e is to use the verifiability. And that means that uh, you can trust the outcome if the voting system is verifiable and that means that everybody should be able to see that they, their own vote has been counted and that it hasn't been changed 
that the host's summation of every vote is correctly done and that there hasn't been injected other votes that shouldn't be there. Uh, so uh, there are um, lots of uh, projects that try to combine verifiability, verifiability with uh, secrecy and uh, it's, it can be done to a certain degree if you use cryptography uh, but most systems want to uh, think that the verifiability part is more important so if everybody votes openly if, if everybody can see what everybody voted then you got the reliability part you can trust the system but you doesn't have, don't have a secrecy part and uh, I just want to say that, that, that it is possible to have to take care of this thing without having 100% uh, secrecy, but still have 100% reliability. Today, most people today use uh, electronic IDs for logging in to online banking, and that's not 100% because uh, uh, the system administrator administrat on the bank can see what you are doing. But uh, you can combine verifiability with a reasonable amount of secrecy. Uh, that means that you, in most cases, can't see what anybody else has voted, but you can, um, uh, but you can still has, have the verifiability. The simplest example of this is if you all uses aliases. Uh, if you just, if every one of you have some secret code, you can have, have an open election result and sum up, you can see that your own vote is there and uh, you can see that if everything is alright. So that's a quick uh, summary. And uh, now for questions. So, that's it. Any questions? Uh, I have a question uh, on uh, in like in the idea or model of an active democracy, democracy how it works. Which will be the role of those representatives, like this uh, person in uh, Valentina that only receives a result and vote. Uh, in the future, it will be erased. Is it, or what, what? What does he or she do between election and election? Does he or she have to think something or only just vote? Yeah. So in the system of uh, this system, you have the, the person who's on the who's voted into parliament will work as a political uh, journal journalist. It's their job to report everything that's happening in the parliament back to the people, and then report from the people to the uh, other parties and so on. So uh, in Sweden and in most cases you have uh, different uh, working groups that works on drafting new laws and uh, with an active democracy every part, every person and organization can choose to be part of uh, every working group without limitations and the people from active democracy who is actually at the table will be the uh, router between the people and the rest of and give the input from the people and then come back so making every part transparent mm -hmm. really so if the working group is very large how are you going to effectively decide on laws if the group is very big yeah that's what crowdsourcing and the technology comes in because in, in the, historically speaking, uh, direct democracy can work you know, in, on the local level and in small groups. You can, if you are in 10, 20 persons around the table, everybody can listen to each other and so on. It doesn't make become unmanageable in the amount of time that it takes. But if you're using electronic uh, systems, you can scale that up to an unlimited amount 
of participants because everybody has a, can choose how they feel and how they choose to spend their time uh, and participate. That's done in social networks today and that can be developed further. How do you solve the gap between those who can use uh, computers and those who don't? I, I know uh, there are uh, great problems here with uh, people that can't get their money out uh, because they can't, they can't <laughs> my use thing, the bank account. My thing to the, to the, to the uh, bank broke yesterday, so I can't access my money now. So. Uh, who, who should they particip participate? What is it? How? Also, how, uh, uh, how? How? How should, uh, should they yeah. part participate uh, that can't uh, use uh, yeah. a computer in the right way? Yes. So uh, today, the, you have the local uh, government uh, houses that should be the place for the people. Uh, it's in some way it. it it became the place to, for the politicians and everybody stays out. But they, they are actual meeting halls where they discuss politics and that should be open to everybody. Uh, and of course you can use uh, libraries or those government places. They are today working as, an, uh, uh, as a place for citizens to get help in different areas and that can be expanded also. Uh, for uh, participating in the politics and uh, it's everybody's cho choice so to you can delegate to everybody or anybody you know you can have different delegates in different fields so if you're not uh, if you're not very active or don't, don't have time to participate that much you can still go over to the library for example get some help if you need it and uh, delegate uh, to different organizations for different issues. But if you, uh, but uh, what if in the case you don't want to get help uh, because the people helping are uh, uh, from a party, or uh, uh, not party is the wrong word, uh, uh, let's take a, a long fetched example. You, you, you want, you want to, to give more roads to, to every person and you are in a town where only meat eaters live. Who should help you to delegate to the right person if you only have meat eaters some, uh, as help? You know, there, there are a lot of uh, organizations that uh, try to uh, uh, better the democracy and uh, if you have a system where everybody actually has the right to vote, then the interest in that is going to be larger. And uh, existing organization that try to help people to participate uh, should be stronger and getting more interest. So I think you can get a lot of different people who, who want to uh, help you to participate in the society. And uh, this is it, you, you know, so like in social networks where there's uh, an almost unlimited different issue groups that you can take part in. So it's, it doesn't have to be a big thing and it doesn't have to be local. It can be, uh, it can be something from the other side of the planet or anything uh, for your specific issue that you want to participate in. Yeah. Uh, if uh, active democracy would uh, get more than 4% of the votes in the next election here in Sweden, uh, which system would you use? Uh, do you have a prepared plan for the uh, direct system that you would use? Then? Uh, which uh, level of verification contra uh, anonymity and such? Yeah, uh, right now we, we are using a prototype system in active democracy for the internal democracy and also for testing and showcasing. And that uses a very simple technique of uh, uh, 
switching out the names of the vote uh, as we have uh, codes, and that's a different code for every uh, everything you vote on. So, so you can everybody can still uh, s still uh, count all the votes and see that everything is done correctly, and you can always see that uh, your vote hasn't been changed, and that the total number of votes correspond with uh, the just uh, with a list of all the people that can vote. So that's a simple, not perfect way to do it. There is a lot of uh, systems that being are being developed. And I know that uh, the factors movement, they, because they are so big, they have 25% of the parliament in Italy. And they also have a lot of people who are both testing out different softwares uh, based on um, liquid feedback, for example, but to develop further for usability and uh, Standards for drafting legislation and so on, and, and they are chosen to do it uh, as transparent as possible. So uh, there's almost no cryptography. Everyone votes openly. Can I add something? Uh, the plan right now is not to to run for parliament at all because it's, it's a huge step because it's a completely new system. And obviously, the software needs to be developed, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, right now, the plan is to uh, do local uh, parliaments, and you know, if, if 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 there's a mandate or two, uh, there's room to grow uh, with the growth of the party if it grows. We can show that it works uh, on a small level. level. So, if, if if there's a mess up. The mess up is small and yeah. huge. So, you know, there are a couple of uh, municipalities in Italy that are run by the Five Star Movement and are using direct democracy systems. And you have also other uh, systems on different places. You, have also, you also have some politicians that uh, sort of convert or say that they are going to follow the people's voice. So, they're going to they use set up direct democracy systems. Everybody can vote and they can follow the results. Not only for voting, but also for proposing laws. Um, yeah? I mean, the, the issue of direct democracy and the issue of uh, electronic democracy. Um, I have lived in, in uh, Switzerland for a while. They have quite much uh, stronger. Uh, System for direct democracy. And their democracy is more alive than ours. Have you uh, investigated that kind of system? Is there something you can uh, use? Uh, yeah. Uh, actually, a lot of people who in the direct democracy movement in Sweden come from Switzerland. Okay. <laughs> uh, so. Uh, and that's uh, referendums, the ability to uh, vote down laws that are proposed, for example. Uh, then, of course, that can be used. Um, and there are moments for uh, developing uh, the style of referendums. But uh, that's l like the Fall from wrestling, uh, the, the referendum that everybody has to uh, uh, vote on a specific issue. It's it doesn't work for for small questions. It must be something that attracts lots of people, and it's lots of work, you know, to uh, inform everybody. And uh, then when you have that thing that uh, then uh, everybody has to vote on a specific issue. Uh, then uh, that you got the limitation of uh, do I have time and the knowledge to to uh, actually uh, read up on, on the issue to make a good decision? Uh, if you got an, uh, for example, liquid democracy, you don't have a pressure to make a hasty decision. Uh, if you don't have the time or, or the knowledge in a specific area, you can just 
uh, don't vote and let the delegate vote for you. And that way you get the participation up because uh, if maybe just three, five, ten percent votes, you can question how uh, is that really reflecting the people. But if you have this thing and that per the people over time delegates to different delegates in different areas and maybe delegate to the traditional parties in some areas. Uh, then you can have the best of both worlds. Every issue, every vote will become a uh, national referendum. And, uh, but you still have the uh, ability for everyone to decide for themselves if they want to vote differently. <coughs> you don't have somebody who, who can judge what's op open for um, national vote or not. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, which, yeah. yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, hi, I'm Rampi. As a, being a German elected pirate in the Parliament of North Australia, so I have to be the apocalypse of the Apoli a bit, sorry. Well, I have plans to, to avoid that some special kind of interest groups, like lobbyists from large firms, now get over, push, pull, put into, four, let me say, two millions of Kruno to millions of kroner maybe, and uh, by the votes of many, many people and other small people if they see, oh, those are delegates. How many voters do they have? About one or two hundred, that's okay. We can buy them directly in cash. How are your plans to avoid something like this happening maybe in a much more liberal democracy system? Yeah, and uh, the transparency is very important. You, the transparency of work, every delegate has to uh, announce what, how we're going to vote and uh, all the voting history. So you, you can always have has that possibility you know, to change your vote or to override the delegates' votes. Uh, but the individuals has still, uh, uh, can still have a reasonable amount of secrecy in how they vote. So, uh, but you say... Can, can I just say, we, we also... We've discussed this very obviously, yeah, sure. but uh, we've, we've talked of, of some kind of buffer. So that would mean that the delegates would have to vote prior to the final vote of the people so that the people can actually go in and see how they vote and how are they explaining that they voted that way. Let's say if Greenpeace all of a sudden votes for an oil drilling and wherever, that would be suspicious. So, so. Uh, yeah, and almost every question you know about uh, direct or, or liquid democracy uh, is that um, the same question can go for the traditional, for the current representative democracy. Uh, how much power has the special interest over the uh, people elected to a parliament? And would that power increase or decrease if you spread that power out to all the people? Who are, is it easiest to buy out the small homogeneous group of elected people or the whole population? So if you want to bribe the whole population, I think you're going to spend a lot of money. And, and, I, and also, I want to de develop you know, the tools for uh, giving better um, better support for decision making. Uh, if you're doing bad decisions, that's because you don't have uh, the proper uh, tools for making your decision. Uh, you know, if you don't have time or knowledge, maybe you just look at which person looks trustworthy or or something else. But if you have a sort of political Wikipedia or something that way you can on every vote can see the consequences and you can see who who's voting for and who's voting against. So say for an, an, a specific <coughs> question uh, and then you log log in you know to cast your vote or to delegate and you can uh, and then you have a selection of your advisors or delegates. Uh, that are weighing in on the issue, and you can see that like, some of your uh, advisors are voting yes, 
some of your advices are voting no, and, and you can get notification. You know, if you if one of your delegates voting one way and some of your advices voting the other way, so those. Uh, systems can be developed and if you're doing them as an open protocol and distributed you can have room for innovation and lots of different ways to uh, make platforms for better decisions we have one down here so it works just a quick one um just very quick okay sorry just this is uh, you're talking about legislative uh, decisions talking about uh, all the referendums about this but many political work today is not only about making laws, it's also like making budget, like budgets and those things. And will that work in an active democracy way or will there still be some kind of politicians, political parties that are doing budgets? Yeah, that will work, yes. <laughs> you can develop the tools for it. You can have sort of a median votes on the, uh, the, how large the pies for different sectors can be. Uh, and you can still use with uh, liquid democracy, you can still uh, have an open discussion about the proposed budgets and then choose between them. Mm -hmm. oh, just, with a, just if you have a small percentage, you can still vote between the you know, right and left blocks. Uh, suggesting about the budget, and that would be one step in the way.